Welcome to the show. I am your host Sandman. Today I'm going to be reviewing Tough Possum Gears Compact Lock Pick Case and Entry Kit. Let's get into it. First and foremost, Tough Possum Gear reached out to me and said, Sandman, would you be willing to take a look at uh, some of our products for review? And I said, I would love to. Unbeknownst to them, I've been a big fan of theirs for several years. I have not been an owner of their products, but I've been following them for a very long long time. I am a big fan of bushcraft. In fact, so much so that in 2019, I drove, whoa, 18 hours across the United States from Austin, Texas, up to, I think it was called Jackson, Ohio, which is a small town outside of Columbus. And I went through the very famous Pathfinder Survival School with Dave Canterbury and uh, Corporal's Corner, uh, Sean Kelly, and a whole bunch of other amazing people, Cole Cracker Bushcraft. I went through their basic survival course. I got my basic patch. I also tested uh, above a 90% on all my tests. So I actually qualify to move forward to intermediate and advanced as well as uh, towards instructor if I were to get that same test score on intermediate advanced. Regardless, I was going through the, actually the instructor portion of the, the basic course under the gray bearded green beret. He was actually in charge of my little squad there. So I got my basic patch under some very awesome people. I'm a huge fan of bushcraft. These guys didn't even know that I was. I mean, I collect all of the 10C uh, kit, you know, the 10Cs of survival from Compass. And then we have, uh, oh, cutting. I have my LT right knife. Um, man, you know, like I, I carry a tourniquet that's high visibility orange. I've got my Olight, you know, I've, I've got the headlamp. I've got everything here. I, I just, I geek out on this stuff. I have all of the Exotac products. I have so much stuff that's bushcraft related that I could easily start a second review channel. Man, I've got the Gucci Leatherman here. I have so much stuff. You, 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 words don't even describe. It, you, people think that I have a ginormous collection for lock picking. You should see my bushcraft collection. It's ridiculous. I could easily start another channel on that. But I live in Central Texas. Ninety percent of ninety nine percent of Texas is privately owned land. There's no place to go bushcrafting out here. I'd just be larping. I'd be live action role playing. So I just. I never got into that space for doing reviews. It's not going to happen, but we will go ahead and move forward. Also, aside from them supporting the bushcraft community, they make a lot of really great products for people that just want everyday carry stuff, or maybe they're tactically minded. Maybe they're uh, paramilitary. Maybe they work in security forces, or maybe they're just military in general. I love that they sent this to me in FTE, which is flat, dark earth, or Coyote Brown or Tactical Peanut Butter, which is fighting words in my book because it is my favorite color in the whole wide world. I carry a Glock 43, nine millimeter every single day of my life here in Texas. You're not a Texan unless you carry a gun. I also carry my LTC, which is my IFAC, my individual first aid kit. I also carry that same uh, high visibility orange. I also have this in flat dark earth, but I just carry the high visibility orange because if you need it, you need it. And then I also have the ProTech Godfather folder, which has been discontinued. I carry an ASP extendable baton and I carry the Surefire Defender. And that's pretty much it. My pants are falling down by that point. So I absolutely love that their product just completely blends in to everything that I carry on an everyday basis. They don't even know these things about me. They don't know. Nobody knows that I am a I just love all of these products. So when they sent this product out to me for review, I was like, bro, this is going to be easy. I can't wait to do this review. So let's go ahead and get into it. Tough, Tough Possum Gear is a family in the business of equipping adventurers with durable, well-designed, and proudly USA-made gear. With Tough Possum Gear, you are set to climb the heights of Machu Picchu, walk down the streets of New York City, or just enjoy an afternoon out in the local park. When we started dabbling in lock picking as a skill set, it quickly became evident that there isn't a good kit for the prepared person who wanted lock opening capabilities, but has too many other skill sets to specialize in it. The set had to be light, compact, and offer a lot of capability. And so was born the TPG Entry Kit in collaboration with Southern Specialties. The Entry Kit pairs off the shelf solutions with custom combinations and custom cut lock picks. It is heavy on rakes and bypass tools to give the best bang for the buck for the user who doesn't have a ton of time to practice. I'm going to be honest with you. I was playing around with this thing for the past week since I've had this. And I, I was like, man, I really feel like a high level lock picker put this together because 
Everything in here kind of makes sense. Everything in here is super practical. Let's talk about the contents here. So let's talk about the entry kit. A well-rounded pocket-sized kit of tools for locksmithing and lock sport purposes with a focus on in-the-field utility. Now updated, we have riveted lock picks together for ease of use, made some tweaks to the bypass multi-tool, upgraded the decoder shims, and added a folding five-piece warded pick set. Now, attention for sale shipping within the USA only by purchasing this product, the intricate, you agree to the legal terms and conditions. So this is only available in the US, And but let's go ahead and talk about the tools that are within it. So just first off, we have our warded uh, tools right here. So these are for warded locks. They're extremely common that you're gonna see actually out in the wild because warded locks are a little bit less uh, likely to corrode and damage in, in, uh, in what would we call that, in climate conditions whatever, um, inclement weather, that's what we call it. And then we have an assortment of bypass tools here. These are gonna handle all kinds of low level uh, security locks that you're gonna see on the trail or just out in town in your urban exploring environment, whatever. We have uh, what I would consider jiggler keys here or rocker keys, and then we have three cone picks, and then we have a knife tool for bypassing some of those lower security locks. And then it comes with two decoders. Sometimes you run into those pesky um, uh, combination locks, whether it be a combination bike lock or a combination uh, lock that has a key on the inside of it. Sometimes people just, I remember one time I had a, a bike with me on a trail and I locked it up and I came back and somebody put their own lock on it just to be a jerk. So something like this would absolutely get you out of buying like that in case you find yourself in that situation. But Last but not least, we do have the lock pick set. And this is a really decent lock pick set. I really do like it. It comes with five picks. We have three rakes and two picks for single pin picking. I like that they are rake heavy and I like the selection of picks. We have the city rake, which is very reminiscent of a city skyline, also known as an L rake. This rake has been around for nearly 75 years, possibly an HPC uh, developed pick from the 1950s, 1960s. We have a, what I would call a, a cycloid quint rake. So there's five peaks here, and this is probably more likely a Christina Palmer design for small pin format locks, such as uh, Master Lock number three and Brinks 30 millimeter padlocks. And then we have the infamous Bogota triple peak design invented by uh, Ray Ramundo. I think that is his name. He invented these in Bogota, Colombia in 1981 while on vacation out of some street sweeper bristles. He was inspired by the landscape of Bogota, Colombia. So he made this very famous lock pick. These are really great on residential locks as I'm going to demonstrate in this video. We have a traditional short hook probably designed by HPC over 75 years ago and a very low profile um, half diamond hook, which is going to be really great for highly paracentric keyways that you can't get around the warding with this, uh, this short uh, flat hook right there. And then we also have some really great double-ended turning tools. These are becoming very common. The first time I ever saw these, I think these are actually in the 2600 or 2500. Man, I'm such an idiot. I think it's the 2600 set because 2600 is a throwback to a hacker magazine. And there is a lock sport group that has been meeting in Austin, Texas since 2007, run by Jonathan Gordon, also known as Jay Gore. And he has been working with Southern Specialties since 2007 um, with the original ownership. And then I I think they currently work with a different company, but I think these are possibly a design from Jonathan Gordon from almost two decades ago. So these are possibly in the 2600 set, and therefore I think these are the Longhorn lock picker turning tools. They go by many different names, but these were definitely um, something that he would have had an influence on the design. And then Christina Palmer also had an influence on the, that design as well. So these are really good top of keyway and bottom of keyway turning tools. So there's a total of six turning tools in here. You really don't need more for an everyday kit. Let's go ahead and talk about this case here. This case is a compact lock pick case, a compact folding case for your compact lock pick bypass kit with four pockets and an overall two inches by three and a half inches profile. When closed, these are made in the USA from a rubberized Trellborg Hank fabric with a heavy duty snap closure. Perfect for all of your compact lock picks under three and a quarter inches long. It holds and is pictured with all of the items with the TPG entry kit except the easy card, fits your Bogota pie picks and jigglers, comb picks, easy decoders, etc. Note, note, this will not fit the lock picking starter set, 
but is designed to fit the entry kit perfectly. I love that this thing is made of a material that cannot be described on video. I thought that this was like a type of nylon. It's not, it's like a rubberized material that I don't even know if I could tear it. I don't wanna try because, because it's made of a rubber, I'll probably just end up stretching it and then it'll look all funky. But this just reminds me of the material that they use as the roof or the, the, it's like a tent that's over the uh, the Denver airport. And I remember doing a tour on that when I was like a kid and they had this really tough nylon material that they'd hand around and be like, who can tear it? And nobody could tear it. It's made of like this impossible to tear material. I'm not saying that that's what it is, but it reminds me of this. This thing is amazing. This is, I would have to imagine that this is waterproof and I'd have to imagine that this is probably very tear resistant. This thing is awesome. I love that it's got like a grippy texture to it, but at the same time, man, words don't describe it. It is not nylon. This is its own thing. They call it a rubberized Trelleborg Hank fabric. And I have to tell you, I've never seen anything like this before in all of my bushcraft gear or everyday carry gear. I've never seen anything like this in my, my, my years being in the Marines or as a private contractor or doing any of the stuff that I did overseas, Iraq, Afghanistan. This is a very unique material. I wish all of my gear was made from this. So I'm definitely going to be investing in more products that are in this material. And I especially wanted in that high visibility orange to match all of my 10 C's of survival. I think that'd be super sexy. So everything fits in here. Let's talk about what I really like about the lock pick set in general. So aside from the single pin picks here, um, I really like that the selection of rakes and let's talk about why. So these particular two rakes, one is designed for smaller pin format and one is designed for larger pin format. Smaller pin format locks are going to be mostly um, it's going to be mostly your padlock. So anything like a master lock number one, number three, number five, any, in fact, one through eight, they're all pretty much the same format. I think number eight is super small, but master lock, they're all the same size pins, which is a little bit smaller than what I'm going to see on my Schleg door lock or my quick set door lock. So these are smaller pins. These Brinks pins are very similar in diameter, but they're super long. But regardless, this, this particular rake is really going to be beneficial on your padlocks. And I don't need to demonstrate that. That's super boring, but I am going to show you on my Covert Instruments uh, Schleg SC1 here. Uh, so this is a Schleg SC1 keyway. This is it's probably going to be on 50% of your doorways. Anybody that's watching this, this is probably on your front door. And if it's not, then you probably have this quick set KW1 right there. So let's talk about those because that's really what I, I, I enjoy about this lockpick set. So we have a rivet here. It's super tight. It is not loose. I could sit here and tap this on my finger and it didn't even budge. It didn't budge at all. Look at that. Didn't even budge, barely. Man, I like that. So how I'm gonna use this tool is I'm not gonna use this tool in a pistol grip type fashion or anything like that. I'm just gonna extend it like it's an actual lock pick and just monkey paw this thing. I'm just gonna overhand grip this. I'm gonna find the turning tool that works for me. The long end is for, uh, for raking. The short end is for single pin picking. The short end goes up on top for top of keyway tension. The long end goes on the bottom of our keyway for raking because as I'm raking, I don't wanna accidentally pull out my turning tool. So let's, we're going to take this three peak Bogota uh, rake design and I'm going to insert it with the plow. This is called the plow, the front of the rake. The plow is facing down just like you would snow plow. And I'm just going to, sorry, I'm going to shake violently my camera here as I go to rake this lock, but I'm just going to scrub the pins. And just like brushing our teeth, we're going to go all the way in. We're going to go all the way out. We're going to hit some different angles here. And I got an open. I'm going to hit some angles this way. I'm going to hit some angles this way, get some rotation this way, get some rotation this way. Just like I'm brushing my teeth. This is a five pin lock. Actually, this is a six pin lock. I forgot I put in another pin here. So I have all six pins in here. This is a standard Schleg SC1 keyway and this lock or this pick absolutely destroyed that lock. Let's take a look at our quick set here. So I have my quick set. This is going to be, you know, a standard uh, deadbolt here. I'm going to use the same tool. I'm going to use the same technique, but I'm going to teach you guys a little secret here. And that is sometimes, even though I want to retract the bolt going left and we think that that's the direction that I need to rotate my plug, I'm going to show you how to uh, teach you a little trick here on how to solve a problem there. So I'm going to take my rake here and I'm going to shake my camera violently. Just kidding. And I'm just going to keep raking. I'm going to keep raking and keep raking. And I'm going to secretly know, unbeknownst to all of you, I'm not going to be able to get this lock. This lock does not want to rake in the counterclockwise fashion, which sucks because that's the direction of my deadbolt. 
I need to be able to work that deadbolt because even though this is an awesome card, this card is only for latches that don't have a dead latch or for a deadbolt. I'm not gonna be able to force this guy in. This guy is not going in. So I need to be able to rake this thing successfully. How do I do that? I'm going to rake it in the direction, the opposite direction that I just tried, which is towards the door, or excuse me, the door frame. And we'll see if I can get any luck with that. Hang on while I shake the camera violently. I'm gonna try all the different angles that I talked about. We're going to circular motions backwards. We're going to circular motions forwards. Sometimes it just takes a little bit longer than we want. And if you get frustrated, here's what we're gonna do. That means we probably have something overset. We're just gonna go back and we're going to reset and we're going to start over. Sorry for the camera. You know, this worked really well off camera. <laughs> Getting it in seconds. That means it's going to happen here pretty soon. Here we go. So I got it. Now, as you know, as I move the plug, this obviously has all five pins because this guy put up a good fight, but I still got it open in under a couple minutes here. So I was able to rotate the plug, but that's not going to actuate my bolt here. They don't sell a plug spinner, but if you do acquire a plug spinner, which I highly recommend for any uh, entry kit or everyday carry kit, I'm going to take my plug spinner here. I'm going to rotate in the direction that I just picked my lock because I want to load it in the op uh, to load in the opposite direction of where I want to take that bolt. And I'm going to retract that bolt. Watch this. Boom, like that. And now I was able to retract the bolt. So that's a little locksmith trick that I keep in my back pocket. So this is a really good option. Alternatively, if you want to, you can actually, believe it or not, um, I can actually take this turning tool and I could take a rubber band and I used to do that. I take a rubber band and I can flick this and it'll actually get it to skip across that shear line. I'm not gonna demonstrate that here because I'm sure I'll mess it up, but I've done that before too. So if you have anything to add to your collection, just add a rubber band and you can do the same technique that I did with this plug spinner. What I'm trying to say is these tools, regardless of this plug spinner or not, these tools will get you into just about any lock that you want to get into as long as you understand how these tools work and you understand how locks work. Sometimes locks um, can be picky. Haha, <laughs> just kidding, pun intended. So sometimes locks have smaller pin formats, such as my pad locks, and sometimes locks have larger pin formats, such as my residential and commercial locks. Now I can single pin pick all these locks just fine, but I wanted to show you guys who maybe not be sitting around three hours a day like I am because I'm a loser and I have no life and I just love picking locks that you can pick all the locks that you want with just these two rakes here. I absolutely love that. You can use just these six turning tools because it's double ended. So even though there's three, there's two on each side and you can get a lot as long as you understand how locks work. I know that when I go to attack a door a lock or a deadbolt, that I'm going to pick it in whatever way to let me pick it, and then I'm going to use my plug spinner to activate my 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 bolt there, so to retract the bolt. So it, a little bit of understanding of of how locks work and understanding of how the tools correlate with the locks is going to go a long way. That being said, I really like this whole setup. I'm kind of embarrassed it took me a long time to pick that lock, but hey, a win is a win. You know, if, if you're not winning by a mile, you know, I, I don't know, whatever they say in uh, Fast and Furious. But anyways, I digress. This is a really great set. All in all, the entry kit is $98. You're getting a lot with that set. Everything here is going to be made from a 301 uh, full hard stainless steel, which is about 160,000 pounds per square inch of ultimate tensile strength. It's not the strongest tool steel in the market, but it doesn't need to be. It, in fact, needs to be corrosion resistant and it needs to be durable. And that's what it is. It is both of those things. If they made this thing out of a 1095 high polished stainless steel, it would rust in your pocket after a couple weeks and I've seen it happen a dozen times. So this is a really great option and a great inexpensive tool steel and a very lightweight non-corrosive tool steel that is going to last you for decades in your pocket because that's where it's going. It's going in your pocket. I absolutely love that. Let's talk about putting this thing in that pouch and some options on how we're going to carry that. So I'm going to take my lock pick set. Now you'll see some of these pouches here are a little shallow and some of these are a little deep. I'm going to take the longer tools and I'm going to put them in the deep pockets. I've seen some people demonstrate by putting the picks in there, but I want to know what I'm pulling out. So I'm going to leave the pick 
pick end sticking out like this. And then we're gonna take this guy. This guy's pretty short. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put uh, right there where the button is. And as you can see, they're almost to the same length here with that button. So, and then I'm gonna take this guy. This guy's pretty short compared to those turning tools. I'm gonna put that on this side with the button here just like that. And I'm going to take these three turning tools. Man, I love the attention to detail on here. I love that they put shrink wrap on here, red, white, and blue. So that way you can know that thin, um, uh, middle and thickest. Uh, I, I'm sure it's going to be about 30 thou, 40 thou, and 50 thousandths thick. That's pretty much industry standard. Absolutely. You know what? While I'm talking about this product made by Southern Specialties out of Georgia, let me just go ahead and give a shout out to the people that make these tools. Um, uh, uh, Jeff Reagan, I think is his name. And we also have Aaron, his is welder. Both of those guys have spent a lot of time in the military. Jeff Reagan was in the Air Force. That guy knows a seer like the back of his hand. He was a seer instructor for decades. He wrote many articles and magazines on the product. I actually collect those unbeknownst to him. I collect those articles that he wrote. The guy is an expert on escape and evasion. And I love that he has acquired Southern Specialties since 2016. He is the new owner of Southern Specialties since then. And uh, Aaron, uh, man, I... F Please forgive me, I don't remember his last name, but he's the welder. And that guy, spent, I think he spent eight or 12 years in the army. I believe he was a dog handler. I love that this is a veteran owned company. It is a USA made in America company. I absolutely love everything that these guys put out. They make some great gear. Let's not forget our decoder shims right here. So let's slip that in right there. Just wanted to give a shout out to those guys. They make cool stuff. Um, I have some of their tools. I just haven't had a chance to review it yet. I will, I just bent that. Oh, look, it bends right back. Love it. So I just haven't had a chance to review it. Yet. I will in the coming months, my friends. But I I couldn't pass on the opportunity to review this Tough Possum gear because I love these products. And then this shim card is going to go right there. So let's talk about the shim card real quick. Um, we have a little notch here. This is for pushing in case the door is the type of door that pulls towards you. You can push uh, on that latch. We have a pull right here. You can pull on that. And then we have a hole here that you can put 550 cord or some type of string here. Uh, so you can really get some grip on that latch. I highly recommend that. And then you also have one like this. This is really great for guarded latches. So if you have a door that has a guard on the front or, you know, <laughs> I'm not that I'm saying I've ever done this before, Bob, but if you've ever been to a gated pool uh, facility, they have like, uh, they usually use like some type of a uh, electronic lock or a gate lock that'll have a guard in front of it, in front of the gate. And this guy slips right over it and then you can totally access it. You never know what you're going to encounter while you're out there uh, surviving and bushing crafting and uh, wilderness exploring and urban exploring and that just clips together like that everything fits in this thing this thing is so cool this is going on my truck this is going in my pocket absolutely love it just spit all over my hand there Dude, I love this thing. This looks so great with my everyday carry kit. I feel like, I feel like he knows me. I feel like he's like, hey, Sam, man, I know you. I know your type. I know what you're going to love. This is going to match your everyday carry like it was, like you, like you designed it yourself. That's what I feel like this was done for. Now then, is this, is this the greatest lockpick tools on the market? Because guys, that's what this channel is about. We're trying to find the best tools on the market. I think that of all the tools that are available on the market, I would say it's easily in my top two, if not top three. I'm a big fan of the Covert Instruments Slim Pickens. I'm a big fan of, oh, where is it? I have it right here. I don't have it in front of me. Oh, there it is. I have, I'm a big fan of the Covert Companion. I'm a big fan of the Swick. Now I have this as my offering to slip inside my front pocket or my side pocket. In fact, not only is this in my top three, because this is my multi-tool here, these are my two favorite jackknife tools, so this is easily my top three. There is nothing else out there on the market like this, except for something I've seen in the UK, which comes from Chris Dangerfield, like that, and that can go in my front chest pocket or something like that, but this really is in a league of its own. There's nothing out there like that, excuse me. Um, I, I just... I, I, I can't decide if this is an everyday carry pocket lockpick kit or if it's four jackknives and or three jackknives and one. I don't know what it is, but it just matches so perfectly with all of my everyday carry gear. I absolutely love that. 
My friends, I don't have anything else to add to this product. Is this something that you think is going to be a part of your everyday carry? What color case are you going to get? Do you have any questions about this? Do you have experience with it? What are your thoughts? I would love to know. I just love that it matches everything that I carry. And I'm gonna be doing a video review in the coming future. We're gonna be talking about the 10 C's of survival where we have container and you have cover and you have cordage and you have cutting tool and you know all that stuff. Well, I think you should add to it by having having, a, a call it the 11 C's of survival, and we should have a covert tool like that, honestly. Um, or you could make it the 12 C's of survival if you add a combination tool like that. I'm sure there's probably 50 C's of survival, but this absolutely does have a place in my bushcrafting kit because you never know. You always hear stories of people that have been, you know, in a car accident or, you know, whatever, you know, they're just stuck out in the middle of nowhere and they find a cabin and they can't get in and there's a lock, you know, and yeah, you could break the window and, you know, all this stuff. I think this is really great for polite entry in an emergency situation. Obviously, if you're in a situation where your life depends on it, you'll just kick open that door with your 13, size 13 boot. So, I don't know. I think it's a wonderful addition to my 10C collection and it's a, a great addition to my everyday carry collection. Let me know in the comments down below. What are your thoughts? And my friends, I'm not rich. I'm irresponsible and I am just a businessman that's blessed with many friends. That's right. <laughs> that's, that's a quote from uh, uh, The Godfather. But uh, I absolutely love this set. Let me know and uh, your thoughts and I'll catch you guys next time. Mr. Sandman.